before I begin painting in the distant trees, I'll retrace some of the rock's pencil lines, which are becoming difficult to see. This is a good thing to do before they get lost in the shading steps, so I'll retrace them while I'm thinking about it. It's sometimes difficult to know how dark to make the drawing, as you don't want to have visible pencil lines in the finished painting. Next, I'll mix up some cobalt green and cobalt blue, and I'll begin working in a sawtooth pattern of distant trees. I'll keep this lower edge soft by brushing on some water. Then before the underlying colors have completely dried, I'll continue painting them in. I'll vary between the blue and the green so that I don't end up with solid green trees. If they get too dark, I'll dab some back with a tissue. Then I'll jump to the background trees towards the right, skipping the closer group of trees in between. I'll carefully follow the rock edge. Same colors, same pattern, but smaller as they are more distant. Now with the same colors, but richer, I'll paint in another layer of trees over the previous group. Again, I'll vary between the green and the blue. Before these completely dry, I'll add in a few treetop details with a rigger brush. I'll pull up a trunk, then smash in some branches as I work back down. Then, with a mix of ultramarine green and ultramarine blue, I'll paint in the next closest group of trees in the same way, again varying the colors. I want this group to subtly stand out against the more distant trees behind them. Then with the rigger, I'll paint in some more pull and smash pine trees. Since the underlying color is not completely dry, these new trees will blend in a bit. I'll dab some paint back to lighten up some spots. I want variety of value too. Then I'll add yet some more pull and smash trees. Since the underlying color is now nearly dry, these will blend less and will appear a little more distinct, which is good. I'll lock these colors in with a blow dryer. Then, with some cobalt blue, I'll add some shade details to break up these tree groups a bit. I'll tend to do this on the lower sections of the trees, where the viewer can see into the shaded areas below the tree branches. No great detail here. These shades are only meant to suggest. 